Good morning. Bienvenue à cette uh, conférence de presse uh, qui parle du, du monticule de déchets radioactifs à Chalk River. Welcome to this press conference about the <coughs> radioactive ma waste mount on, at Chalk River. Miss Elizabeth May, I, you can go. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be a sponsor for this morning's press conference. But I'll turn it over to the uh, leadership here from various Algonquin nations and from the Algonquin Anishinaabek Nation Tribal Council. I'll turn it over to you, Chief. Okay. Hello, good morning. I'm Chief of the Kebawek First Nation, one of the 11 Algonquin First Nations who, whose people live in the Ottawa River watershed since time immemorial. I'm pleased to share the podium this morning with Elizabeth May, my fellow chiefs, and we want to um, you know, speak about the uh, nuclear pollution that is uh, occurring at Chalk River and is only going to get progressively worse. In our language, the Ottawa River is called Chichisibi, or the Great River in English. Chichisibi is sacred to our peoples and is the heart of our unceded homeland. Our land has never been surrendered through treaty, and our people have never consented to the nuclearization of the Chalk River site for the past 75 years. As many of you know, during this time, there have been two serious nuclear accidents. The site has been serious, serious, severely contaminated with radioactive materials that will be dangerous for all forms of life far into the future. Now the government of Canada, through the private sector contractor, is proposing and promoting a giant radioactive waste mound or a nuclear waste dump less than one kilometer, one kilometer from the Ottawa River. In our view, this is insanity to put such a deadly waste in a huge pile on top of a mound right beside a river. Studies show that the mound would leak during and after construction, and after a few hundred years, it is even expected to degrade due to erosion and other natural processes. Canadian Nuclear Laboratory's own studies uh, predict this. We and our sister First Nations, Kitty and Zibi and Ishinabe, have been, have been involved in the consultations with the dump proponent and a nuclear regulator for the past year. These consultations seem to have been an afterthought for the promoters of this dump. Consultations with us began after the final licensing hearing for the facility in June of 2022. Our team has done a detailed ground truthing on the site where CNL wants to put the giant dump. The team learned a great deal on, on visits to the site this past winter and spring. They collected samples for analysis, identified an endangered tree species, tree species, set up webcams and took drone footage. Their discoveries about the wildlife and endangered species living on the proposed dump site are very interesting and important. It is shocking to us that the proponent never did the research and seemed unaware of these things. Our team's findings are summarized in this booklet. I have some copies to share and it'll also be available after on our website. I'd like to be clear, Kebawek First Nation does not consent to the construction of the radioactive waste dump on our unceded territory. We believe that the consultation process has been inadequate and that our indigenous rights are threatened by this proposal. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People says that indigenous people must provide their free prior and informed consent before radioactive waste is stored or disposed of in their territory. We have not given our consent. Many of you may have seen last week, there was an announcement by uh, CNSC and that, that it had signed an agreement and had received consent from the Algonquins of Pickmore Conigan. It's a rather, you know, a, a tough situation and we're kind of, you know, feeling hurt in that they would, you know, proceed, you know, to give consent when they are only but one voice of the Algonquin nation. We represent the other 10 communities of our nation. And we are here, you know, to unequivocally speak to the fact that we do not support and will not provide consent uh, for this project. Keba Wek First Nation is calling for the NSDF project at Chalk River to be canceled. The focus at Chalk River must be to shift to real cleanup of this site that does not leave a talkic legacy. In closing, you know, I just want to, you know, remind 
everyone, especially, you know, people, Canadians living here in the Ottawa uh, area. This nuclear site is already leaching radioactive pollution into the Ottawa River in the form of tritium, which is radioactive hydrogen. And it's only going to get progressively worse. And there's no treatment for tritium. So it's so CNL and CNSC will tell you that they are going to build a treatment plant. But you know, in our world, we've learned that you never build uh, your treatment plant above where you collect your drinking water. And this is precisely what the NSC is going to do. They're going to build a water treatment plant to try and eradicate iridium out of the radioactive water. And then they're going to put it into the Ottawa River where all the folks here in Ottawa are going to be drinking it. We need to wake up, take our head out of the sand and recognize what a danger Chalk River poses, not only to the Algonquin and the Anishinaabe people, but to all Canadians, especially those living in the Ottawa Gatineau area. And I'll turn the mic over to Chief White Duck. Thank you. What's Chief Amon? Greetings, everyone. My name is Dylan White Duck. I'm Chief Kitigan Zizi Anishinaabe. And it's an important matter to sit on this here today. Along with Kebouac First Nation, we were singled out last year for consultation after the final licensing hearing for the nuclear waste dump wrapped up in June of 2022. We have many concerns about this proposed nuclear waste facility called the NSDF. We are concerned about the site for the proposed dump. At no time in our consultations has anyone provided any justification for putting it so close to the kitchen CV. We have received no satisfactory explanation for why other sites well away from the river were not considered. We are concerned about the type of facility. In our view, a landfill doesn't make sense for radioactive material that will be hazardous for thousands of years. We are we are concerned about the addition of the new harmful impacts that this may cause on top of existing effects from the 75 years of nuclear initiatives at this site. The Chalk, Ri Chalk River nuclear site was created without free prior consent and informed consent. We have never agreed to this and it continues to be operated on, our, on the unceded territory. We have consistently expressed our opposition to further nuclear development in our Algonquin territory. We are concerned that the CRL, the site is contaminating the surrounding lands and waters with radiation and other hazardous materials. We worry about the radioactive materials getting into our air, our sacred waters, and affecting the wildlife and health of our peoples. We are concerned that the B4 station and blasting to create the new dumps threaten endangered species, such as the wolves, Blandons, turtles, and the black ash trees, all of which are species that potentially species at risk. And we are concerned about losing a loss of a spiritual site that is very important to us, such as the Wazo rock, which is referred to as uh, a settler as bird rock. An Algonquin is known as the Migazi Kishikabakan, a point abrupted due to the nuclear hazard. In our final joint submission with Kebouac First Nation, we point out that the federal government has failed its duty to con consult with us. We also point out that approving this dump would violate UNDRIP, the UN Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples is already mentioned by Chief Lance Heyman. And in conclusion, I echo Chief Heyman's statement that we do not consent the construction of the NSDF in our territory. 
We believe that consultation has been inadequate and that our indigenous rights are threatened by this proposal. Thank you for hearing me out. And this is a grave concern for our people and our nation. We do not consent to this as Chief Plantain referred to. And we need to be properly consulted with respect to UNDRIP and all those who are moving along this process without pre prior, prior consent. Thank you so much for hearing me out. Hope you understand our concern for the future of our territory. Good morning. Uh, Savannah McGregor and Indigenous Cause. My name is Savannah McGregor. I'm from Kitagon ZB Anishinaabeg, and I am the Grand Chief of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg Nation Tribal Council. I am pleased to have this opportunity to share a perspective as Anishinaabe people and our concerns about the proposed nuclear waste dump. I'll start with a bit of history. For over a century, Canada's Aboriginal policy was aimed at eliminating our governance systems extinguishing our rights, disregarding our treaties, and assimilating our people into settler society. We have faced intergenerational trauma, displacement from our unceded territory, and historical exclusion from decision-making at the Chalk River laboratory site. Canada's colonial policies have contributed to the ongoing discrimination faced by our people. However, we are resilient, we continue to resist colonial erasure. We are actively working at revitalizing our traditional knowledge, language, practices, and laws. To do this revitalization work, we must connect with the land as it forms a central part of our Anishinaabe identity. The Algonquin people have a stewardship vision for our lands and waters. We aim to ensure that all forms of life can live free from threats and potential harm across generations, seven to be exact, in a healthy and safe environment. In our, Anish in our Anishinaabe tradition, women are keepers of the waters and men are keepers of the fire. Men's firekeeping teachings include the earth's internal fire. Traditional knowledge teaches that the heat from the burying of nuclear waste would change the Earth's internal fire, and that's the nuclear energy leaching into the water and then flowing into living forms would disturb all life. But no Algonquin communities were ever consulted about the construction of the Chalk River nuclear site. Now, our communities are expected to accept in our territory the waste that this facility has generated, as well as other waste brought in from elsewhere. It is known that the proposed waste mound would leak radioactive materials into the Ottawa River, or Kitchisibi. This is not acceptable to us. Algonquin and Anishinaabe people deem water sacred. It is the element of life that circulates through all living beings and ensures all life on Earth. We continue to prioritize protecting the Kitchisibi and its water, the sacred wealth, from any threat to its well being. That is why we strongly oppose this ill-conceived plan and do not give our consent for its construction. Algonquin and Anishinaabe people are not alone in opposing this giant radioactive waste dump at Chalk River. Hundreds of, hundreds of civil society groups and individuals have spoken out against it. Over 150 municipalities have passed resolutions of concern or opposition, including Gatineau, Ottawa, and Montreal and the Assembly of First Nations passed a resolution opposing the dump in 2018. So many voices are calling for a halt to this careless plan, but, we will, but will we be heard? I sincerely hope so. And it's hard to even grasp the fact that this is a conversation that we need to have and a fight that we need to push forward with and we just need to combine our collective efforts until the next well, until the post postponed hearing comes about. So until then, um, let's work together and rally to help put an end to this. Miigwech. We're gonna now turn to, on uh, the Zoom screen, we're joined virtually by Grand Chief Lisa Robinson, a chief of, also chief of the Wolf Lake First Nation. Uh, turning to the screen, Chief Robinson. 
Okay. Kwe Kakina, Lisa Nadizhnikaz, Mongdo Dem, Megan Zagayigan, Nadojaba. Good morning, Ben Bomate. Um, greetings to my colleagues and the leaders and teach and every one of you here today to hear our concerns. I am Chief Lisa Robinson of Wolf Lake First Nation and Grand Chief of the Algonquin Nation Secretariat, which includes the First Nations of Temiskaming Wolf Lake and the Algonquins of Barrier Lake. I bring to you greetings today from the top of the Geechee CB at Temiskaming First Nation. The disposal of nuclear waste and its potential impact on Aboriginal rights is of great concern to the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. Future generations will have to contend, contend with decisions being made to today. You see as leaders and people here today, it is our duty to preserve and protect Mother Earth for future generations. We cannot risk the destruction of Aki, Nibi, land and water, which are sustaining for all of the life beings. Protection of water is of the utmost importance to First Nations. Water is required for life, and therefore any disposal facilities must meet the highest standards of environmental and water protection. Yet, we have learned that the proposed near-surface disposal facility does not meet international safety standards. As an Anishinaabe Kwe, I carry with me great responsibility as a woman, as a mother, as a chief, as a leader, to protect the water today and for future generations to come. As women, we are responsible for the water teachings and the protection of water as it provides for all of creation. In Anishinaabe worldview, we have an inherent responsibility as the caretakers of the earth. And that inherent responsibility is one of our inherent Aboriginal rights, which are protected by the Canadian Constitution, Section 35. We support and recognize the declaration made by the Iroquois Caucus and Anishinaabek Nation in 2018. Their declaration on the transport and abandonment of radioactive waste had five key points, including no abandonment, better containment, more packaging, monitoring, retrievable storage, and away from water bodies. The near surface disposal facility would fail to meet all of these key points, but most concerning is the close proximity of the proposed facility to the Gitchisibi, the Ottawa River, less than one kilometer. We do not agree with the near surface disposal facility proposed on our tidal territory along the Ottawa River. Our nations have not been meaningfully consulted on this project, which will clearly impact our ability to exercise our Aboriginal and tidal rights. Meaningful consultation requires a process of seeking, discussing, and considering carefully the views of our members in a manner that is cognizant of our Anishinaabe values. Consultation with Canadian nuclear laboratories has been sorely inadequate. Despite this lack of consultation and accommodation, the nuclear regulator seems poised to approve the project without our nation's consent. We view this process as clearly inconsistent with the federal objective of advancing reconciliation and not in keeping with the Crown's duty to act honorable in all its dealings with Indigenous peoples. Miigwech, merci, thank you. Merci et miigwech. I'll only add a few words. C'est clair qu'on doit souligner que les Premières Nations Algonquins n'ont pas été consultées de manière significative, pas du tout. Et l'industrie nucléaire, comme toujours, a l'idée qu'elle a le pouvoir de d'exiger de, que toute la nation du Canada accepte les risques nucléaires et dans ce cas, va déterminer d'avoir un dépétoire de déchets radioactifs plus proche à la rivière des Outaouais, qui s'appelle en algonquin la Kitchi-Sibé. 
as someone who is standing here in solidarity, I just want to underscore that when Canada said we believed that we would uphold the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples to free prior and informed consent, I don't think we had in mind that SNC-Lavalin would once again get its way. By the way, SNC-Lavalin is the primary shareholder of Canadian Nuclear Laboratory. And the, a thank you again to Chief Heyman, Chief White Duck, Chief McGregor, and Chief Robinson, and we're, uh, they're available for your questions. We'll now proceed with the uh, question period. As a reminder, one question, one follow-up. We'll start in the room, then go on Zoom. If people on Zoom, it's not time to use a raise hand function if you have any questions. Nous allons maintenant passer à la période des questions. Une question, une question suivie. Nous allons commencer en salle et puis ensuite euh, sur le Zoom. Les personnes sur le Zoom, si vous avez une question, utilisez la fonction main levée maintenant. Nous allons commencer par euh, Fraser Needham et Pétien. Thank you. Um, so I note that the, um, just from reading other media, that the hearings were paused last year to have, I guess, more consultation. Has there, have you actually had any more consultation with uh, the site holders since then, or is it just, um, what, what was the follow-up since then, I guess? So the procedural order granted by the commission gave us six months uh, extension for us to be able to review some in material, do some of our own studies, and come back with, you know, information. It became clear quite quickly that six months wasn't enough time. Um, the amount of information that had been accumulated by CNSC over the course of the last six and a half years related to this project um, show, show, indicated that we should have been consulted early on and that didn't happen. And asking you know us to do full literature review plus our own studies within the six and with the granting of the extension eight months uh, was not realistic. But in that time frame, we were able to go in and do some studies on the ground. Um, being better consulted with by CNSC, that did not happen. I mean, we had challenges right from the get-go following the procedural order. We had challenges negotiating funding agreements, which took you know, time. Um, when we were on site, staff were obstructionist, um, you know, made it very difficult for us to do uh, studies. So while we were able to do some work, um, it wasn't through any effort made by the NSC and the partners. Um, we really took the opportunity that had been granted to us to try and bring forward you know, our greatest concerns. And we're here this morning to tell you that what we saw and what we are seeing are huge gaps in the amount of work and studies that should have been done, that were not done. And with our findings, we're realizing that uh, there are huge gaps. And based on that reality, um, there's not an adequate time for us to have been consulted. Therefore, you know, it's hard for us to make an informed decision and, you know, provide consent. Um, it's, 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 yeah. So in essence, you know, we did get the extension, um, but not quite enough time to do, you know, the kind of consultation, the deep consultation that would have been required to meet the thresholds of the United Nations Declaration. Right. Okay, and just as a follow-up, I guess the uh, a lot of the concern, of course, is the proximity uh, closeness to the Ottawa River. If it was, if this site was located further away or another area, would would that be more acceptable, or is it just the basis of having nuclear waste a site located on this land? No, a big part of the issue is the proximity to the Ottawa River and the fact that the nuclear waste nuclear waste that is already there, already, you know, polluting and uh, polluting the Ottawa River. If there was another site selection, again, you know, we'd want to go through the full process of understanding and mitigating the potential impacts. But the problem with this particular project is that there was no alternative um, site presented. It was simply, here's where we think it is the, the best place. But were it to be moved away from uh, the Kitchissippee and in an area where it would have less uh, impact, and we would most certainly, you know, want to look at that. 
because at the end of the day, I think we all have a responsibility to manage this waste. We just don't believe that it should be buried in a nuclear waste dump uh, less than a kilometer from the Ottawa River. Thank you. On va passer à Nelly Aberola de Radio Canada. Oui, bonjour. Oui, Kakina. Um, en, je voulais savoir quelle était la suite finalement. Euh, qu'est-ce que ça va donner? Il va y avoir une audience le 10 août et ensuite qu'est-ce qu'on espère? I just was wondering what was the follow the following after that. What are you going to do with this? I know that there is something in August 10, so I was wondering what what is the next step. Thank you. There's an official hearing <clears throat> in August that uh, obviously Chief, Han Chief Lance Heyman referred to that we have concerns about. Um, this group, that's uh, I'm not, what they say is an arm length from the government of Canada. <laughs> Clearly it's not. Uh, it's the federal government has that fiduciary obligation to consult the First Nations, not an arm length corporation that assumes that responsibility. It works, the whole process has been working backwards. Uh, you have an organization that wants to have to have this happen, yet they're the ones steering the consultation process and steering the hearing and steering this. So there's not a third party body that's moving this forward. It's 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 all this one organization, which is wholly flawed. It's a true David versus Goliath story in terms of First Nations versus a group that has had worked on this for many, many years and we were only given six months. Uh, and the fact that they want to have this urine by virtual means um, is very dis disgusting. In the reality that there is no more COVID, we had to do this here in, during, during COVID last year. And we, don't, we, just, we just don't understand why the urine is held virtually. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, we had this opposition, we had this urine last year in person. And, and it's just flawed, this whole process. And like I mentioned earlier, it's it's Canadians and Chief Heyman preferred this. Canadians and the citizens of Ottawa should be scared of this. I'm not I'm I'm very shocked that the citizens of Ottawa are not aware of this. I speak to many citizens of Ottawa and they never heard of a nuclear waste disposal uh, uh two hours away from their their home here. I, you asked that you asked the, the the prime minister himself. Would you drink the water from the Ottawa River? Would you let your kids swim in the Ottawa River with a nuclear waste disposal? Would you let all the MPs that sit in the House of Commons? Would you swim in the water knowing that there's actually a nuclear waste disposal and a store and 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 waste disposal right around around the corner? We have legitimate concerns about this. We've been here for millennial, the Algonquin Nation, and our people. We're still here. And we're going to be here for another thousand years. We don't want to deal with this contaminants that will be poured into our river, the Ottawa River, the Kitchisubi, the Great River, that we have so much history with this river. So much history is embedded in this Algon this, in our history as the Algonquin people in this river. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, this they are putting this here and they're slamming it down our throats and we have nothing to do with it. We can stop this. Uh, maybe one more question. I know that you are working of, of a kind of project of protection of nature. Uh, I was wondering, does it mean that now we have the only choice is to protect the Ottawa River as well, like uh, injustice, you know, protection? All across Canada, we're hearing rivers are getting protection, they're getting names, they're getting an identity. The Ottawa River is one of the most historic rivers in this country. Big, one of the most historic rivers in this country. And this, this river deserves that same entitlement as other rivers across Canada. And I defer to Chief Robinson for additional comments for, with regards to a, a name and keeping it uh, sacred. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, the Gitchisibi, we are the people of the Gitchisibi as Anishinaabe Algonquin. And, you know, in our worldview, it is our responsibility to ensure the protection of that water and also the land that, with it, because in balance, those two aspects provide for all of our 
our all of life and all of creation and what's that which sustains us. So the protection of water is absolutely uh, of the utmost important for First Nations, but should be and should be prioritized for everybody. Without water, you don't have life. And that's what it is at the end of the day is, you know, having that responsibility and sharing that responsibility uh, with everyone um, throughout our, our lands and territory and beyond. So for us, uh, it's interesting, you know, to see um, some of the, the newer aspects, you know, providing personhood to water in terms of the legal realm. And it's that essence and that spirit, you know, that is tied to our ceremonies and our culture and our identity and our place names and the place where we come from. Our community of Wolf Lake is named after water. And that is part of our identity and culture as Anishinaabe people from Wolf Lake. And that's reflected in that. And behind me, you see, this is the Gichisibi the Ottawa River, which is so important to all of our people, but also for all people of all of our nations here in Canada. Miigwech. Thank you. Next question, Mario from uh, National Observer. So uh, I'm just kind of curious about the kind of shady consultation process. You mentioned Pigwangnigan um, gave consent. Uh, I know a number of years ago, Algonquins of Ontario were involved too. They even named a building at CNL. I'm just wondering, you know, has there been renewed conversations with Pickmogonagon? Is Algonquins of Ontario still involved in this process of consultation? And then maybe comment on, you know, what it's like to kind of have CNL pick and choose which Algonquins um, give consent. So your, your questions had uh, many parts. So in terms of uh, Pickmogonagon, you know, involvement uh, with uh, the project. Uh, we were only informed just prior uh, to the announcement by the new chief, uh, Mr. Tarzan. You know, he wanted to give us a heads up knowing um, that, you know, our position was, you know, uh, directly in contrast, you know, to the position of Big uh, Walk on again. Again, um, we were struggled, were troubled by, you know, that the decision. Um, you know, we're on the ground, we're seeing uh, the impacts on the fauna, on the wildlife, on the, on the area. And, you know, they have people who are supposed to be in there and they have to be observing the same issues as we do. Um, what we just see, you know, is a continuation of colonialism. You know, governments or their entities have learned um, that, you know, dangle a carrot, you know, conquer and divide, offer something to one that is not afforded to the other and create division. This is a prime example, you know, of that happening. The sad part is that, you know, it's a First Nation who seem to have forgotten, you know, their responsibilities and their priorities as we've just described to you. Protectors of the land, protectors of the water, you know, to give that all up and provide consent to a nuclear waste dump in exchange for a few baubles and the potential jobs. And read the press release, it speaks to, oh, we will have a say in terms of the monitoring and eventual other projects that are online there. Again, smoke and mirrors. You know, unfortunately, you know, baffled by uh, promises of, of employment, of, of of you know being able to monitor what they've essentially consented to is watching you know the continued and increased pollution of the Ottawa River that this facility is going to do over the next 50 100 years if this near surface disposal facility is allowed to be built it already is leaching radioactive pollution into the Ottawa River the NSC and all of its partners are downplaying this. They will tell you that we're going to put in a treatment system. We're going to deal with issues. We're going to mitigate. You cannot mitigate the impacts of nuclear uh, waste. It was mentioned we are responsible for the protection 
and we work to strive, you know, in protecting for the next seven generations. It's almost impossible for us to do this in this case because the waste that is being generated is going to have an impact on 30,000 generations. So how do you reconcile, you know, our need to do protection of the environment and water? And we are looking at a seven year, a seven generation horizon when we know what they're burying in this mound and in the deep geological repository that's being proposed for high level waste in the Ojibwe territory in Northern Ontario, it's not good. It's going to poison the territory. It's a challenge. That's, you know, that's the reality we face. Um, so, you know, in the interim, we're going to do what we need to do. We're going to try and educate Canadians leading up to uh, the formal hearing where we will present, you know, our findings and our joint submissions are available in the public domain. So I would encourage you to go out and read them as well. They really speak, you know, to what we've seen, what we heard, what we saw. I'll talk to a little bit to the lady's question going forward. And once we have the hearing, in the event that CNSC comes forward and issues approval you know, for the construction of NSTF, we're most certainly going to have to explore what other opportunities are there. Because we, I've just described a consultation has not worked, it will fail. And this government has no problem, you know, promoting on one hand, you know, the importance of UNCRIP, but disregarding it when it's convenient for them. It's, uh, that state of affairs. So um, we'll also look at what our legal options are in terms of judicial reviews and other mechanisms. Uh, again, I think we can demonstrate that we have been inadequately um, consulted. And you know, watching uh, proponents, you know, pick and choose uh, who benefits, who doesn't. Um, for me, it's just a continuation of colonialism, and it's really sad to see that the people of pick and their leadership have chosen, you know, to give consent to a project. Because when we consulted our people, the message we got was loud and clear. You need to do whatever you need to do to protect the water. That's why we're here. Just one follow up. I'm just wondering then, was pick given the same amount of time for consultations or were, do you, are you aware that they were consulted many months, even years prior? It would appear that PIC has had an ongoing relationship with CNSC and CNL and AETL through their involvement and partnership with the Algonquins of Ontario. You know, for the most part, they are still one and the same. So, as you mentioned, you know, they named the building. Um, and so PIC's relationship has been longer, but they did not present, you know, in Pembroke last fall, they did not ask the commission for more time to be consulted. Um, they already had their own process. And, you know, it took every bit of effort on the part of Kit again, CB, and KBAWEC to convince the commission that the CNSC had not done its job in consultation. Because simply, uh, they had referenced, so we, we sent an email, we, you know, called, um, but never formally, you know, tried to engage us. Um, lots of efforts been done in the last six months, but you know what? We missed out on six and a half years. It's you know somewhat too little, too late. I think Lisa, you might have something to add. Thank you, Miigwech, Merci. Um, I think uh, just to reiterate this consultation and with different Indigenous groups, I think at the end of the day, you know, we can all agree that. Uh, what we're seeing is that, you know, this whole aspect of Canadian nuclear laboratories, you know, them being the nuclear regulator, um, they're in a position where they're poised to move ahead with this project, regardless of anybody's consent at this point. And we can all, you know, uh, talk about how, you know, this consultation process with all the different nations has been, you know, sorely inadequate. And that is something that we can all agree on at this point, I believe. And I think that's something that, you know, really has to be stated and put on the record. And it's important. 
because this involves all of us. Miigwech. Thank you. Next question, Greg Newing from the Pontiac Journal. Hey, so um, uh, so Chief White Duck spoke a bit uh, about the uh, potential impacts on the Ottawa Gatineau area, and I think one of the general messages has been that this is not just the concern of Algonquin First Nations, but all of us um, sharing this land. Um, so my question, uh, I, I write for the Pontiac Journal, and uh, just a simple question, uh, what uh, might be some of the uh, impacts on uh, on the Pontiac area uh, from the side of uh, if uh, any of you could speak a bit to it, thanks. Just because there's a line that says Ontario and Quebec doesn't mean that uh, um, the impacts on the Quebec side will not be felt. It's the same impacts that will be felt on the other side as well. Uh, you got to imagine that our people had, didn't imagine there was a line there. there was, that's an imaginary line for our people. That the fact that the Algonquin people and the Anishinaabeg, an imaginary line. All it is, it's just a, a colonial boundary that separates Quebec and Ontario. That river is is on both shores of Quebec and and on Ontario, and Quebec's not even the 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 the, the, the municipalities all along the the river there are not even being included in any dialogue. So I think there's a a, a misunderstanding, just because it's on one side of the river, it's not like the other side is going to be impacted. It's going to be impacted greatly. And the city of Gatineau too, another growing city that's flourishing quite well in my opinion. And those residents too are not being uh, involved in this particular matter. So there's a lot of uh, uh, distrust. Um, I'm very, I'm very, dis I'm very disappointed that the media has not catched on to this more because uh, you are our allies in this case. You have to be our allies. So we have to raise that awareness so that citizens that live along the, the other side of the, on the Quebec side are aware of this. And I don't think they, they're aware of this. I'll be quite frank. I, I think they're, they hear, but I don't think they're properly uh, involved in, at, at any degree. Thank you. Yeah, follow up, Greg? Um, yeah, maybe just uh, one follow up. And, uh, and Chief McGregor also mentioned this as well, that they're, has been uh, collaboration with municipalities from what I understand from what Chief White Duck is saying, uh, that, that must mean that it's been a bit more on the Ontario side. So um, I don't know if anybody could speak to potential ways that municipalities on the Quebec side could collaborate, could get involved. Um, I guess we'll just have to revisit and revive the conversations that were had in the past. Um, with so much going on in the world, it's hard to keep abreast onto everything that's happening, but it's so important that we work together. And um, again, it's, there's no clear path on a nuclear road. Um, I made a statement in the past in regards to that building that was named in Anishinaabemowin, and I actually met the individual who got asked via Facebook how to say what this word was in Anishinaabemowin. And that individual didn't even realize the impact. So it shows like, they're appropriating our, our culture, our identity, our nationhood, and what, what First Nations community has the ability to just, oh, make bids for the Ottawa Senators with all this money that we don't have when we live under the Indian Act. And there's just layers of complexity and red tape everywhere. And we just need to get the truth out there so then we can engage in the right movements to put a stop to this. So, so I would just like to mention that look, in the Renfrewan area, I mean, the, the issue is fairly well known. There are a number of non-Indigenous groups who are actively, you know, um, opposing uh, this project and bringing information to their population. You know, they have been allies, you know, to the Algonquin in this process in helping educate us as to you know their concerns um they're making it known uh that they want to be involved and, and support us and us actively using uh these groups you know to facilitate getting information out and i think you know over the course of the next seven weeks or six weeks leading up to the hearing on august the 10th 
that is going to be our primary focus is educating the non-indigenous population in and along the Kichisibi, whether it be in Quebec or in Ontario, as to the potential impacts of the NSDF, what it's already doing and the potential uh, that it has to impact all of our lives in the future. If you take a look at our booklet and you take a look at you know some of the animals that we're seeing there, the stick moose, uh, the contaminated vegetation, the tritium levels in Birch Creek, which is leaching into the Ottawa River. Um, we should all be sitting up and taking uh, notes because this project will have huge impacts. It'll have impacts on the fauna, it'll have impacts on the land, it'll have impacts on the animal, on the winged creatures, on the insects, the frogs. Uh, you know, CNL speaks highly of their work to protect turtles, but again, you know, that's their vision of protection. What we see when we go there is we see a trap that they've created, which you know forces the turtles to be stuck in one place where they're e easily predated by a species who, who 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 depend on them, and you know they're they're surprised when their tracking um, receivers on these turtles you know go dead because they believe that you know they've done a great job. Um, Western science and traditional knowledge um, has a role to play. What we see a lot of with NSDF is uh, Western uh, science. What's really lacking is when we go in and we get on the ground, um, there's a basis for us to provide you know, traditional knowledge as well, which is just as important as and just as vital as Western science. So. We may look at the same issue, um, but we're completely looking at it in different lens. But we want to thank and, and, and acknowledge the strong support that we've got from our non-Indigenous allies as we bring forward these concerns. As we mentioned, it's not only us who are concerned as Algonquin people, but we're concerned by the millions of people who are already drinking this water and who are only going to get progressively worse over the next 50, 100, um, thousand years while uh, this mole mound you know continues to create havoc you know we'll all be dust and you know my children and my grandchildren and their grandchildren will be still suffering the consequences of a decision today to build a nuclear waste dump you know one kilometer from the Ottawa River totally insane doesn't make sense thank you for the opportunity thank you last question Kirsten uh, from Evidian no question, perfect. So that will conclude the press conference for today. Thank you all. Miigwech, Chief Robinson. Miigwech. Mm -hmm.